Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Footy Travellers Podcast. Hey everyone, and welcome to our World Cup Need to Know series. This episode is a conversation Mike and I had back in early February of 2022, toward the end of the random selection draw period of the first phase of ticket sales for the Men's World Cup in Qatar. It was also back when I was coming off of COVID, so forgive my more than usual nasally voice. By the time you hear this, that random selection draw period will have passed. But don't worry, as you'll hear, we'll see several other ticket application and direct sales periods come and go before the tournament kicks off in November. If you've ever wondered how you actually get tickets to a World Cup, what kind of tickets are available, or, especially recently, what to do if you wind up with tickets but can't travel and need to offload your tickets, we think you'll appreciate this episode. Well, welcome everyone to another episode of the Footy Travelers Podcast. I am Colin, one of your hosts, and I'm joined by the ever handsome Italian American friend of mine, Mr. Michael Taroni. Wow, that was so nice of you to to give me such a proper introduction. How are you? Uh, how have you been lately? I've been good. I I have been in a excited and eager mood now that. We have entered the phase of World Cup season, and I know we're going to talk about that on this call. Uh, Nope, that's not what this is. Mike is still in his work mode, leading calls, making presentations, hopping on Zoom. Doing it with no pants on. The way of 2020 to 2022. Yeah. How are you, Colin? You know, I'm okay. I'm all right. I've uh, been battling a little bit of the Rona uh, lately. Came down with a really raw sore throat a few days ago and uh i think i'm i'm on the bright side of it though so well you were holding out for a while dodging it as best you could i just hope that you're taking care of yourself doing it doing a good job of that you know what they say the doctor says the best way to dodge coronavirus is to make really good podcasts podcasts i think he said podcast but and i don't know what a podcast is so let's just stick with uh Let's stick with what we know and we'll go from there. Well, one thing I know is that we are, as we record this, just a day away from the end of the first sales period of the first phase of FIFA World Cup ticket applications. So in today's episode, I want to talk a little bit about that and maybe walk our listeners through what they could expect if they want to apply for tickets for this World Cup and the type of tickets they can apply for. How's that sound? I love it. We are about to apply for our own tickets, and we have a specific type that we're going to apply for. We've kind of walked ourselves through the decision process, and we'll get to what our decision process was, I think, in the latter half of this episode. But let's kick it off and go a little bit deeper into what we already mentioned were those phases and sales periods. So there's three main phases, and FIFA was quite clever in naming them. We have phase one, phase two, and the last minute sales phase. And in each of those phases, there are two separate sales periods. Right now, we are coming to the end, as we mentioned, of that first sales period, which is known as the random selection draw. I'm going to ask Mike in a second to explain what the random selection draw is and why it's called that. But after that, Things will pause and FIFA will return with the first come, first served sales period of this first phase. And that process will then repeat after another pause in phase two. So Mike, with the random selection draw, what is it and why is it so random? So the random selection is the first opportunity in the FIFA World Cup ticket process for people to apply. It is essentially a glorified lottery where you can apply to any match that you would like. And when you say any match that you'd like, there's a couple different ways you can go to get specific matches. There's different ticket types, if you will. So we have the individual match ticket. We also have the team-specific ticket. And this year, or at least for this iteration of the World Cup, we have 
a stadium series ticket package. I believe in the past at other World Cups, this was a stadium specific ticket type. So Mike, tell us in a little more detail what those three ticket types are. So the individual match ticket is your ability to look at all of the matches, which are numbered one through 64. So if you would like to see the opening match, match one, or the final match, you can apply to those tickets. Again, it's a lottery. So so what is the team-specific ticket? The team-specific ticket is only for the team in which you would like to see throughout the duration of the tournament you can only purchase the team-specific tickets in quantities of three, four, or seven. Now, the caveat to the seven is if they advance to a further knockout round, so whether it's the round of 16 to the quarterfinals or the quarterfinals to the semifinals, you will have a ticket to all of those preceding matches if they advance. So when it says seven, it's at maximum of seven, if your team is lucky enough to make it that far. So, little interjection here. Turns out, Mike and I missed an important change to the team-specific ticket that occurred with this World Cup. In the past, if you were awarded or purchased this kind of ticket, let's say a TST4, you would pay for the first three games the guaranteed group games, up front. And then, if that team advanced to the fourth game, which would be the round of 16, then you would be entitled to a ticket for that match, charged for it at that point, and properly awarded the ticket or tickets to that match. If the team didn't advance, then no charge on your credit card and no need to award you a ticket. This year, though, things are significantly different. And perhaps that has something to do with why there is only a TST 3, 4, or 7, and not a 5 or 6 ticket package. Although I'm not really sure what that why is. Anyway, here's Mike to explain, straight from the FIFA website, what the team-specific ticket product looks like for this upcoming World Cup. Okay, the team-specific ticket series, aka the TSTs. A series of match tickets to support a specific national team of the customer's choice, which allows the customer to watch either three, four, or seven matches of the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022. The TST purchased guarantees the customer tickets for matches of such rounds of the FIFA World Cup that are included in the specific TST package purchased by the customer regardless of whether the national team itself qualifies for such rounds. The respective packages contain the following. TST3 comprises only the three group stage matches played by the national team of the customer's choice. TST4 comprises the three group stage matches played by the national team of the customer's choice and one round of 16 match. TST7 comprises the three group stage matches played by the national team of the customer's choice, a round of 16 match, a quarterfinal, a semifinal, and the final. Yeah, the final. So there you have it. Sorry about that. And thanks for letting us clear that up right away. Okay, back to the original conversation. The rest of it should pass with flying colors. What if I only want to go to five games for my team, assuming that they would make the round of 16, win that, and go on to the quarterfinal? So, good question. You can get a team specific, and you would apply for the seven, and you would see them play through the duration of the time that they are in the tournament until they are knocked out. Now, if if you only want to see five matches because you have to leave on December 10th, my boss wants me back at work. Oh, oh, and I almost forgot. Uh, I'm also going to need you to go ahead and come in on Sunday, too. Then you still have those tickets in your name, and you would need to find a way to either sell it back to FIFA or potentially, and we'll get into this later, sell it to another fan that is in Qatar. 
And how about the Stadium Series? This is a little different this year. Yeah, the Stadium Series is kind of a fun or a new addition to uh, what FIFA has been doing in the past. And I think the reason that they have done this is to get more people to explore the country of Qatar because it is fairly small and so it's fairly accessible. And what this means is you can buy a series of four matches and see a variety of different stadiums. They have created different mixtures of stadiums that you could see between the eight stadiums. So if you are really interested in seeing a match at Khalifa International Stadium or Lusail, which is the signature stadium of this World Cup, it's where the final will be played, you can pair those in some variety that they have created with a stadium series ticket. And speaking of that variety, if I remember correctly from the website, they're lettering these series. So A through N, which gives us, what, 14 different possible series? Yep. And what about the games that are available at the stadiums that host those matches? Are they for particular rounds or can I, can I see a final with one of these stadium series packages? You cannot see a final with this stadium series package. You are only able to see group matches and round of 16. Gotcha. So talk to me about the ticket categories. We said that there's different categories of tickets, regardless of the ticket type. I know we're throwing a lot of categorical words at you right now. So categories one through three, and then also a fourth category. How do they differ from each other? So let's talk about one through three, which is essentially the public uh, the public categories. And so category one is what they claim to be the best tickets that are available to the public. So those are going to be the most expensive. These are not including of like luxury boxes and anything that's more executive suites. This is for the public. So category one, you're paying the highest price. These tickets, what we have determined from our experience can vary where they are specifically within the stadium. And we can get a little bit into that. But category one, best seats, most expensive. Generally speaking, category one is defined as the best seat simply because of what would you say is the determining factor? I would say they are based off of the best viewing experience. They're on the sidelines. Yeah. They, they, run, say- they run corner to corner along the sidelines. Now, not to be a nitpicker, but the reason that we are generalizing is because stadiums are shaped differently. They have different capacities. Some of them are older, some of them are newer. And so the categories are varying by stadium. So, and you can see in the ticketing process, the color coordination of where category ones are versus category twos. So some of the bigger stadiums, the category ones are more central on sidelines. So what you would say the 50 yard mark on a football field. Category twos are a little bit closer to the end lines um, or corners and maybe a little bit higher up as well. Category threes are most likely going to be behind goals because they consider those to not be the best viewing experience because you don't get a more holistic view of the pitch. So that's category one through three. There is a category four and is strictly for locals, meaning um, people of the nation of Qatar or the host nation. So, So the last World Cup, the Russian nationals had steep discounts for tickets in the category four section. And the same goes for um, this World Cup. You have to prove that you are um, a local. At the very least, a resident. Yes, at the very least, a resident. So, And they have a certain allotment that is um, only given to those category fours because that is part of the partnership that FIFA has with their host countries to allow for the uh, host country to be given tickets for their people. So as an international, seeing a ticket for $20 to a World Cup game in category four, too good to be true, not for me, not eligible. Unfortunately, but perhaps depending on where you live and you're listening to this right now, it might be for you. 
Now, this probably goes without saying, but applying for any of these ticket categories or types requires you to sign up for a FIFA account online. Be sure to read their terms of sale for the general public to find out even more details than what we're giving you and some of the rules behind the limits on how many tickets per game you can apply for or how many games overall. You're really good at the fine print talk. You could be one of those people on the ends of commercials where they say it really quickly in terms of the conditions. I think you may have a future. Yeah, you know, I'm good with the words themselves. It's the it's the speed I really need to pick up and, and master. I mean, we could just like, you know, just speed up this and just put it in a little like fast forward. Well, if this uh, if this doesn't work out for us, Mike, I may find myself uh, training it with some auctioneers and uh, recording commercially. So I, I I'll have you to thank for that life altering suggestion. Yeah, I'm gonna bid seventy five dollars. I'm gonna bid seventy five now. One hundred now. One hundred and twenty five. <laughs> I'm just providing you options. The world is my oyster. <laughs> now, once your application goes in, again we have to wait until the end of that random selection draw period, and you'll be notified of either a successful, a partially successful, or a non successful application. Of course, we pause go into the first come first serve period in which we have to basically get in a, a classic ticket sale queue, log in, click the button just at the right time, sit and wait our turn and make our purchases. The good news there is what's available. Once you decide you want it, you can buy it right away. We're going to put up in the show notes, uh, a link to one of the explanation documents or the FAQs for all of this. So if we didn't hit on anything and you still have some questions about it, head over to the show notes, find that link and feel free to dive in. One piece that I wanted to mention, and it's one that's important is the demand and being able to identify the demand when applying to these tickets. Tell me why demand and knowing the demand might be important. So the demand is I would argue very important in the random selection draw, because if you are very interested in just getting to the world cup, you don't care where you don't care what team you see, you just want to attend, which kudos to you. It's worth it. Go do it. Um, The demand is where you're going to be able to see the fluctuation of high demand tickets. So for instance, the final and the opening match have very high demand. And you will see that when going into the portal and looking at individual tickets or team specific tickets, or even the stadium series, it will say high, medium, or low demand based off of the category that you're looking at. So for instance, you may be looking at a match for a England team specific um, series, and you only want category one. Most likely, those are going to be in higher demand than category three, and it will show you. So if you are someone that is really interested in just seeing a team, but you don't want to pay that much money, then you have to balance out your priorities in terms of money versus if you really want to get that ticket by lottery, maybe going for the lower demanded categories or stadiums or matches. So speaking of demand, I want to talk a little bit about our very first experience with all of this at the South African World Cup without maybe as much demand as some of the subsequent World Cups since then, Brazil and Russia, us getting quite a large number of tickets. Now, there is another factor in that process, having, I believe, at least four applicants all applying for different games and including each other on our applications. One thing I don't think we mentioned at the top was that you can include your friends and your guests that you want to go to the games with on your application. Those friends and guests can also submit their own with your name. And so you're essentially increasing your odds of getting a ticket that way. So one thing we did not cover, which I think is part of the pillars of strategy when applying to these tickets is in the random draw, If your tickets have been selected, you have the option to purchase all of them or none of them. You do not have the option to purchase only a few of them. So by applying with more people 
to the same or similar matches and including them as your guests, you have a higher likelihood of getting the tickets that you would like because you're essentially doubling, tripling, quadrupling your odds. But no, you, if you get your selected, you have to determine if you are going to be paying for all of them at once or none of them. So that does play a factor in your application in who you are partnering in your application with. Hey everyone, we hope you're enjoying the show so far. Just a quick break to ask that if you like what you hear, show us your support by hitting pause to give us a follow wherever you're listening to this episode. Better yet, take a second to send this episode to a friend and tell them to listen as well. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, we'd love it if you'd leave us a rating and review. And remember, if you want more info on anything you hear about in our episodes, check out the show notes or visit us at FiperMedia.com. Now, back to the show. So let's walk back a little bit to South Africa and that whole experience for us. I think when it came down to it, you and I saw together a total of nine or more games. Yeah. I think we applied mostly for individual games and ahead of the final draw for the tournament. Now, of course, we did that because we wanted to go for a certain period of time and we wanted to take a certain sort of circular route around the country and hit as much of it as we could. And we did know at least when the games were going to be played at the stadiums. We didn't know who was playing in them yet, but we knew when, we knew where. We figured, hey, let's apply on this itinerary of this loop. And we got, I guess, lucky with some really great matchups. You know, I think I remember one of the group games being France Uruguay in Cape Town. Yeah. And we were right near the corner flag, which was beautiful. And knowing the period of our life that we were in, just out of college, maybe not having the biggest budget, probably applying for category two or three, but still being that close at that corner was a tremendous experience, especially from a fan's perspective. And then Brazil comes, and I think we let... Brazil 2014. And then Brazil 2014 comes along, and we may or may not have let our luck and our experience with the South African ticket application process sway a bit of our decision-making as far as how many tickets and how many games we would apply for ahead of time before the draws and before we knew our itinerary. Do you remember our experience with that? So I think because South Africa was our first World Cup experience, we may have been uh, a bit misguided with the demand (laughs) because South Africa was the first World Cup to be hosted in the continent of Africa. There were a lot of people that did not want to attend. It was noted that it was um, not nearly as high of a demand World Cup as prior World Cups. And like you said, forthcoming ones as well. Subsequent, excuse me. Brazil being a powerhouse in the world of football had a very high demand for tickets because who doesn't want to go to Rio in the summer during the World Cup when the Brazilian team had a very high chance of winning it. So be a part of the the spectacle. It's essentially um, carnival come early. So we, in our ticketing wisdom or lack thereof, did not apply to the... Mm, it's not as if we didn't apply. It's we did not take into account that high demand. And we were trying to be very targeted with the matches that we were trying to attend based off of similar travel experience that we had with South Africa. Perhaps overly targeted. Overly targeted, I think is fair. And because of that, we did not get as many matches to uh, attend as we did in South Africa. We only got two matches in Recife and Natal, which by our luck, we were able to actually see a USA match, which was great. And we also got to see a Italy match, which was great because I wanted to see them as well. Um, and quite a famous one, if I do so remember. As Tell, tell me about that. Uh, folks may remember one uh, very dynamic, some may say controversial. Oh. 
<laughs> or, or hungry. Uh, Uruguayan individual by the name of Luis Suarez, who took a bite out of the arm of an Italian player on the field. And uh, it got a little bit of press. And we were actually at that match. Unfortunately, it did not bode well for the Azuri, but still a memorable game. Memorable, if only for the fact of us learning what actually happened on the field afterwards, because I in the stadium, it was very confusing as to what happened. We weren't that close. We didn't see the bite. Uh, we knew Luis Suarez was involved for sure, but what a guy, what a, what a mouth. <laughs> but you know what? We also discovered the beauty of capifrutas that same day. Fast forward to Russia, Mike. Different experience. We wanted to get the USA team-specific ticket, I believe. I, I don't think we got it, and we just decided, you know what? Let's go ahead and lock ourselves into Moscow and St. Petersburg and apply for tickets at those stadiums. And that turned out fairly successful for us. We got a few games in each city. Do you want to explain why, for our maybe less knowledgeable listeners, why we didn't get a team-specific ticket for the United States? Uh, why wasn't that awarded to us? We wanted to. I know we wanted to apply for it. Maybe because the red, white, and blue didn't actually qualify. Oh, that's right. Some may say they red, white, and blued it. Did they blue themselves? <laughs> They sure did. No, I'm afraid I just blew myself. <laughs> There's got to be a better way to say that. Yes, of course, without any U.S. in the tournament, we could not get a team-specific ticket for our Stars and Bars boys. And knowing that we didn't want to travel too far and wide throughout the larger country of Russia, opted for St. Petersburg and Moscow as our base cities. And got a, a few games in both of those cities. I believe a total of three. We had a total of four tickets. We attended three matches. That is correct. We Excuse did me, four matches, attended three matches. I think we wound up getting tickets in Volgograd for the Japan Denmark match and just kind of kept that as our back pocket game. Maybe we wanted to travel outside of the two major cities. Maybe we didn't. Um, we wound up not going. We just kind of ate those tickets, unfortunately. But And this is part of that selection uh, process that I was mentioning earlier. When you apply, you are allocated all the tickets that are accepted or none of them. So sometimes you need to actually have a very coordinated plan as to where you may want to be going as your base cities or cities you'd like to visit if it's going to be more than one and take into account timing where where you may be during some of these matches because you don't have the um, luxury of sort of picking and choosing if if you get you know 10 matches but you only can only attend two of them then you're going to have bit of a challenge getting rid of some of those. FIFA, of course, does offer to buy them back, but that is only if there is a buyer on the other end, I believe, if there's a demand for it. So keep that in mind as well. I'll get to the most memorable element of applying for tickets for Russia for me, but I want to introduce the idea of the fan ID and how that came about for the Russian tournament and how it is also something that fans going to the World Cup in Qatar will have to apply for, but but certainly will be awarded just by applying for it. But that is, again, the fan ID. It's a, it's a laminated lanyard card that has to correlate with the names on your tickets. Which also has to correlate to your passport. But it also gives you access to free, well, in Russia, it gave us access to free transportation to matches. Um, I also think it gave us access to fan zones or like expedited lines to fan zones. So it, it did have a a lot of perks, which previous World Cups, they did not have anything like that. It is just one thing, again, to keep in mind if trying to sell your tickets, uh, not maybe not to FIFA, maybe you sell them to another fan. That fan has to have a fan ID to get into the game. So 
any fan you sell to is probably going to want to be verified by FIFA. Um, and the fan ID is how they do that now. They track who you are and how you're getting to the tournament and where you're coming from. So question to you, Colin, and this is one that we were very uh, interested in learning when we got there because it's not documented. Say I have a fan ID from a ticket that I had previously and I wanted to buy another ticket from someone else, but my name does not match the ticket name. What happens when I step up to the ticket counter and have to try to scan in to go into the stadium? My memory and my experience is that on paper, you're told that the names on the tickets have to match those carrying the tickets and match the name thus on the fan ID. However, I believe that we had sold our tickets or at least yes. exchanged uh, with someone else to get different seats, did get to the ticket turnstile in the front of the stadium, did scan our fan IDs, did scan our tickets. Nonetheless, we're still let into the stadium. So maybe not a huge deal. Uh, again, on paper, it says one thing, be mindful of it. But if do you want to take your chances at, at selling your tickets to a fan directly and not to FIFA, back to FIFA, or you want to maybe barter and exchange your tickets and just get different seats. Uh, maybe you have a ticket to a match that you don't want to go to and someone else does, but they have a ticket that you want to go and use. You know, Ideas there, not saying we're recommending any sort of process, but in our experience, the fan ID is necessary to get you into the stadium. You obviously do need a ticket to get into the stadium. And as long as you have one of each, you should be good. Now, let's go back to now, one of our favorite things, uh, part of the Russian ticket experience. It's that stupid animated running man that they had on the screen while we were waiting in the queue at 3 a.m. And this running man really wasn't doing much running. He was taunting and us. He was pretending to move forward so as to bring us with him. And we sat for hours. How many hours was this? I mean, I recall waking up at 3 a.m. and being on there until I had to go to work at 8.30. And keep in mind, listener, this is for the first come, first serve phase. You will not have to go through this queue and wait during the random selection draw phase. Let's hope they put some type of other animated figure in this ticketing process for the first come, first serve phase. Otherwise, Mike will be Mike will be re-traumatized from Russia. Yeah, I'll be triggered. Well, speaking of applying for tickets for Qatar, we uh, know some of our ideas. Maybe let's talk about what we're going to do as we apply. What are some of the factors in our decision-making process from your perspective? I'll lay out a few factors that we have. The first being we would like to see the United States make the World Cup. Number and one step. Make the World Cup. Oh, we laugh now when we cried four years ago. I will cry again. So we are focusing on team-specific tickets for the United States. That is priority one. Now, the beauty of the World Cup being in Qatar, some may have counter-arguments to this, but the country is quite small. Team-specific uh, tickets in a country like Russia could be challenging. Say we got four team specific tickets to the United States if they had made it. We may have been flying around the world's largest country, kind of having to figure it out, perhaps on the fly, if we even got tickets for them to advance. We've also talked about some contingency plans, maybe not getting the USA team specific ticket in this first phase, running out of phases and opportunities to get tickets. You know, maybe we see that there's another ticket type or ticket package that's in less demand. And maybe we go for that to increase our odds of getting at least some games at the World Cup. Out of the two other types, the individual match or the stadium series ticket, which would you go for if you had to choose between the two? I am very intrigued by the stadium series ticket. I think it's a smart way to get people to see more parts of the country and see a variety of what they're claiming to be some of the most sophisticated and modernized stadiums in football history. So from a spectacle perspective, 
we as fans and experienced World Cup goers uh, like that variety to see what it's like at these different stadiums. So I think as our priority too would be to focus on stadium series ticket. Well, it's a lot for us to uh, potentially work through if our first ticket phase application doesn't go through. Fingers crossed we get the USA team specific ticket. Double fingers crossed that they actually make the World Cup. I think in a future episode, we'll talk about the actual stadiums themselves and at least what we've heard and seen online, give you a bit of insight into that without having to do all the research yourself. Colin. Yes, Michael. If you were to give one tip, one piece of advice that we haven't really laid out yet, what wisdom would you bestow upon them? One thing that is coming to mind that we haven't mentioned yet is the option to defer your ticket application to a different category if the category you selected is not available. And I would say 100% do that. Now, one of the caveats there is that your awarded ticket category will not be more than one level from the ticket category you applied for. For example, if you apply for category one and it's not available, You could be deferred to category two if you allow that, but not category three. Other than that, it's got to be just the most fun stage of the World Cup, and that's the group stage. There's matches every day. All of the countries who have qualified are there. That's both the teams and the fans. So the party atmosphere is alive and full and rich. Once we get into the knockout stages, you know, people start going home. Um, But if you've never experienced the World Cup and you really want to get a quick flavor for what it could be, and is, and you only have so much time to fly halfway across the world, go to the group stages. Go to the first two weeks of the tournament and just get amongst it that way. I couldn't agree with you more. The group stages are, I would say, arguably the most lively. They are the most fun for the neutral fan as well. Um, it's it's a very good time. And they're the cheapest tickets. <laughs> so that is uh, a big win for of the, for those neutral fans or the people that just want to get a taste of it and and then you know be on their way. Well, let's wrap this up, listeners. Hope you got a little bit of the knowledge and information from our experience out of this one. And like we said, we'll continue with little bits and pieces around traveling for footy to the World Cup in future episodes. One last piece that I would love to be able to see is sharing anyone else's feedback or thoughts on ticket application approaches or strategies, we would love to try to meet up if we are in the same city or location or or at the same match. So please feel free to reach out to us uh, with your suggestions of how you apply to tickets for the World Cup or experiences that you've had or simply needing guidance to how to navigate some of the categories and things like that. Yeah. You can reach out to us on Instagram at Fiper Media or Mike, do you want to give your handle on Insta? My handle is quite long, but it is W Michael Taroni photography. Can you spell Taroni real quick? T I R O N E. All right. Well, you heard it from Mike's mouth. A beautiful mouth. It is a mouth that could go for a capifruta right now. Go ahead and get yourself a drink, Mike. Listener, be in touch if you need us, and we'll see you next time. The Footy Travelers Podcast is a production of Fiber Media and is sponsored by Maybe You. If you've been thinking about how to reach the 25 million plus people we know tune into the men's and women's World Cup games, or if you're like us and want your message to travel the globe to the 256 million people who play soccer around the world, that's that, according to FIFA at least, then maybe you'd be a good fit to partner with the show. To learn more, reach out to us at FiperMedia.com. That's F-Y-P-E-R media.com. Our episodes are edited by me, Colin Martin. Mike Taroni is our creative director. Cover art is by Felix Palau. Theme music comes from Shumatar, with additional music from Mr. Mastermind. Other contributors to the show include Danny Headland and Helen Mimaris. We'll see you next time.